Thank you for the opportunity to address this August House. But before I proceed to deliver my address, I'd like to render my sincerest apology for not being able to be there in person. It was due to circumstances beyond my control. I would like to thank all the organizers for this great conference. And I'd like to stand on all existing protocols and proceed to deliver my address. Certainly, the contributions you all have made to advance the center right political tradition in Ghana are immense, and you all should serve as inspiration to those of us coming up. The new patriotic party, MPP, is a progeny of the United Party, UP tradition, that has over the years represented courage and valor in the face of some of the authoritarian tendencies that our past leaders have exhibited. The men and women who laid the foundation on which we stand today did not just wear the badge of honor, but they also wore the badge with integrity. Indeed, the MPP and its members are descendants of great men and women who stood for truth, freedom, and justice with property-owning democracy as our creed. It is an undisputed fact that as a party, our forebearers did not only play a significant role in the attainment of Ghana's independence, but also played a crucial role in the struggles leading up to the independence. Our great heroes like J.B. Dankwa, Obeche Bilamte, Edward Ekufuado, and Ufuria, William Ufuriata, amongst many, of whom time will not allow me to mention, played a pivotal role in birthing our country. Not only did these great individuals play a crucial role in the independence struggle, but they also sacrificed materially, physically, and spiritually to build this tradition that we proudly find ourselves in today. Even as we recall the enormous sacrifices made by these great sons of our tradition, we must not lose sight of the critical roles played by our foremothers as well. The feat and national fame that our great forebears achieved through their sacrifice and desire to build a new nation are what all culminated into the tradition, a product of which we are enjoying today. Those accomplishments could not have been possible without the support of some legendary women who were part of the struggle. Indeed, we cannot talk about the history of Ghana's independence without recognizing the industrious role played by renowned women like Sophia Oboshi, Mabel Dav Dankwa, Hena Kujo, Rebecca Nade de Ayete, and Susanna al Hassan, just to mention a few. It was through the political activism of these women, which played out in diverse ways, that our sovereignty as a proud people and a nation was finally restored. The role of women in socioeconomic development of every country is crucial to the development of effective governance. A former Indian Minister of Law and Justice famously said, and I quote, I measure the progress of a community by the degree of progress which women have achieved. However, despite this reality, women's participation in post-independence Ghana has been low to our collective disappointment. The participation of women in Ghana's body politics at, at best can be described as tokenism or placation as the barriers that inhibit women from releasing their full potential as political animals continue to persist. I have some statistics here I would like to share. In 2000, the members of parliament, there were 200 members of parliament, out of this only 25 were women. The total number of ministers were 80. Only eight were female. In 2004, there were 230 MPs and only 25 female MPs. In 2016, there were 275 members of parliament. Only 36 were female. We had 110 ministers out of which only 10 were female. In 2020, 275 parliamentarians, only 40 are women, and only nine ministers. 
a drop of one. This tells us that the struggle continues. Even though women are about 50% of the population, we are underrepresented in all institutions. We have to struggle for more. We have to push ourselves harder to attain more. I recognize there have been improvements in the inclusion of women in political participation, but the numbers bear evidence that we are nowhere near where we should be as a gender. Free SHS is a great foresight policy, in my opinion. Now parents don't have to decide which child goes to school, whether the boy goes to school or the girl goes to school. And almost always, the boy gets to go. The girl will stay home and help out in the house. But with the free SHS in five years or 10 years, when our children, especially the girls, have graduated into great professionals, then our voices will be heard louder. Today, political parties have become the pivot around which democracy revolves, and the role of women in driving these political parties cannot be overemphasized. The MPP has been at the forefront of all major democratic reforms, and our women continue to play a significant role in this direction. Ghana's democracy has become the toast of many and is seen as the most peaceful and stable democracy on the continent. Indeed, the enviable accolade attained by Ghana as a democratic society cannot be discussed without recognizing the great contributions of our women. If there's one political tradition that has and continues to demonstrate its abiding faith in the ability of women to deliver, then it is none other than the MPP, the party we all proudly belong to. After 40 years in the political wilderness, former President John Ejikum Kufour offered opportunity to a lot of our women to contribute their quota to the national development. Similarly, our current president, Nana Ekufuado, has followed suit by further offering more opportunity to women. It is important to state that, despite the show of commitment to the cause of women by our leaders, women are yet to reach their full potential when it comes to politics and national development. It is for this reason that I consider the theme for this important summit, building stronger women to make a strong party very relevant and timely. Indeed, the MPP has produced women who demonstrated bravery and gallantry in defending the cause of the party and the nation as a whole. Stalwarts women like Hawa Yakubu, Grace Coleman, Gladys Asma, and Teresa Ambule Tego, all of blessed memory, as well as Christian Checher, who played significant roles in the second and third parliaments of the Fourth Republic. In contemporary times, the likes of our First Lady, Mrs. Rebecca Kufuado, the Second Lady, Hajia Mrs. Samira Baumia, Mrs. Ursula Ekufu, Otiku Afisa Jaba, Mrs. Frida Prempe, Hadja Alima Mahama, just to mention a few, continue to blaze the trail for our women folk. The MPP has a large pool of talents, especially women, and we need to identify, adopt, and nurture more of our talented women, make them stronger to be at the forefront of the challenges we are facing now. We need to build and sharpen the capacity of the young ones and prepare them towards taking the baton of the party. Let us mentor as many women as we can and offer them the opportunities to deliver where applicable. A great singer once said, and I quote, if a man takes a decision, he's strategic. If a woman does it, she's calculating. A man is allowed to react, a woman is only allowed to overreact, end quote. If you're given the opportunity, you must not only meet expectations, you must exceed them. We must always be mindful of the former mayor of Canadian city of Ottawa, Charlotte Whitten's observation that whatever a woman must do, she has to do it twice as well as a man to be considered half as good. To think about it, if a man scores 50, we have to score 100 to be considered 25% good. 
That's a tall task. But the good news is that we are more than able to meet this challenge and we are more than capable to meet the challenge. It should not be lost on us that when we are persistent, they call us bossy. When we are deliberate and meticulous, they call us weak. These are the real challenges faced by women in leadership positions. And that is why we must salute our women who have succeeded in leadership. If you aspire to be in leadership, find one of these great women and ask her to be your mentor. Mentorship is golden. Always remember that your success is what will pave the way for more women to be given great opportunities. As such, we never want to create an opportunity for our detractors to easily point to bad situations and say, look, we shouldn't have given that opportunity to a woman in the first place. Let me end with this. A stronger woman's wing in the party is a surety for the growth and sustenance of our tradition. If women's mobilization has never been in doubt, then a strong support-based mobilization to build a stronger party must be the duty of us women. But we cannot be on the outside looking in. We must seize the opportunity when it presents itself. And after we seize the opportunity and have it in our possession, we must make the most out of it. We must wow our detractors such that they will be left with no choice but to say the women of MPP rock. Long live MPP USA wing, long live MPP, long live Ghana, and God bless our homeland Ghana. Thank you.